Thank you. Thank you very much and welcome to Games Master, television's first ever video game magazine show, especially designed for people out there who find Pictionary pointless and Kaplunk a waste of marbles. Each week on the show, we'll be reviewing new games, giving away exclusive tips and cheats, and casting our eyes over the latest hardware and software developments. But the biggest portion of our show will be devoted to our three special game playing challenges. So, if you've ever dazzled your local arcade inhabitants with your hard driving prowess, or simply enjoyed a waggle of your joystick in the privacy of your own bedroom, this is the show you've been gagging for. And now, to go over to our first challenge, I'd like to introduce to you a man who you'll be seeing a lot more of in the next 10 weeks, the ultimate computerized couch potato, the Games Master. Greetings. So, you'd like to pit your skills against one of my little challenges. Come in, little plug indeed. Well, I've decided to be gentle with you, this being our first coming together, and I've come for the decidedly cute Super Mario Brothers 3. Your assignment is to collect 50 coins in two minutes on the familiar first level of the World 1. A few pointers. First, don't forget that you'll need to acquire the ability to fly, because only in the heavens can sufficient coins be found. Second, go like the clappers. 50 coins in two minutes. Good luck. <laughs> And who better to get to grips with the fiendish gameplay of this deceptively cute game than our first contestant, Daniel Blake from Edgewell. <laughs> Welcome to Games Master, Daniel. Hi. Now, you are in fact the first ever competitor on Games Master, so you're right up there with the first ever block Twitter on Krypton Fighter. How do you feel? A bit tense and nervous. Right. Now, you've practiced the game a lot. Yes, quite a lot. So, you're quite confident about the challenge? Well, sort of confident. Well, we'll all be rooting for you too, Daniel, because it'll be nice to start off with a winner. Thank you. So, if you'd like to go and plonk yourself in the hot seat, we'll get ready to start the game. Thank you. Now, joining me in the commentary box from Mean Machines and Computer and Video Games magazine is world famous computing celebrity Julian Jazza Rigno. Julian, welcome to Games Master. Hello. Well, we're making history here with the first ever game on Games Master. How does that make you feel? It's pretty good. It's one of the greatest games ever, so uh, a good way to kick off the series. Right, two minutes to get 50 coins. Very, very tough, very, very fast challenge. Daniel, are you ready? Yeah. Then get collecting those coins. And he's off. So collected coins is the name of the game, Julian. He's knocking them out of these mystery blocks. Is this the best way to go about it? Yeah, what he needs to do is actually pick up the mushroom and convert himself into Super Mario, which um, essentially gives him two lives. If you get hit, you can go into the small Mario. What he also needs to do is uh, pick up the leaf, which gives him flying abilities. Now, where's this leaf going to be, uh, then? On the right, if he can... Oh, my word, there's the leaf, just as we spoke about it. OK, 25 seconds gone, five, five coins. Not a lot of coins so far, Julian. No, what he needs to do is... Uh, the raccoon suit gives him flying abilities, and what he needs to do is clear a run-up and then uh, be able to access higher parts of the screen that he normally couldn't reach. And there'll what be he's more doing coins now. there. He's going to take a run-up and then uh, fly into the clouds. Oh, my word, launches himself violently off that, and he's, up and he's building up those coins, 12 coins, 45 seconds. Yeah, gone. there's a lot of coins up here. Basically, he needs to rush along a bit. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, what's this little thing? A one-up? Yeah, is that going to do him any good? Nothing at all. Completely pointless waste of time. He ought to be uh, collecting coins, considering the time limit. OK, 24 coins, just about a minute gone. He needs to keep getting those coins. We cannot stress it enough. But yeah. he's flying up and off the screen. Oh, my yeah, word. He's trying to uh, reach the pipe, which leads to another secret screen, which is step full of... Oh, he's completely oh, he's just missed the pipe. Is it. this curtains for our young challenger? Well, well, it's, it's, it's trouble. Uh, he needs to access a power pill down here now and convert these blocks into coins. Uh, it still won't be enough, so the pressure's on him to actually get up to that green secret area okay. and uh, collect the coins that are in there. So. Right, he needs 60 more coins. He's got about oh, 35 seconds left. It's going to be very, very close, Jazz. He must yeah, he, get up he really here. needs to do this. this and he's got. slotted in there quite comfortably. Now, he's in a little secret room here. This is going to be enough coins, I think. Yeah, yep. he's, got, he's got 50. He's got to come he's, out of here and rush right as quickly as possible. He's past the, the 50. Run. He's got about 70 and 80 seconds to go. He's really got to run quickly to the right and he could well make this challenge. He he's just going to do it. There's nearly 10 seconds to go and he's done it! <laughs> Congratulations, Daniel. We said we wanted to start with a winner and we certainly did. That seemed like no trouble at all to you, Daniel. Was there any point at all where you thought, I'm not going to do this and I'm going to be extremely embarrassed on live television. It was uh, just um, getting the raccoon Mario and then right at the end I just wanted to make sure that I wouldn't fall down any pits and hit anyone. Well the thing is, 
Since you completed the challenge, you're the first ever winner of what we hope is going to be a more prized possession than all the Oscars, Emmys, Barrys, and even Swap Top Eric's put together. You have won the first ever golden customized Games Master joysticks. <laughs> If you take that bike to Edgeware with you and you can put it in your hand and walk proud and erect through the high street. Thank you very much, Daniel Blake. Now, before we go on to our celebrity challenge, let's take a quick peek at this week's reviews. Each week, our reviews will be linked by a theme. This week, it's time to smear ketchup on your hot dog as we look at movie conversions. First off, on the Mega Drive, flex your pecs with postmodern icon Arnie in Terminator. It's actually a good game, it's very playable, nice big sprites, lots of exciting explosions and gung-ho action. There's a lot of uh, digitalised screenshots which are very impressive and if you have any friends around you could pose with it. For once it's a Mega Drive game that packs a real challenge. It's got, still got the great standard of graphics and sound that you come to expect from the Mega Drive, but it's also got a very high standard of gameplay. <laughs> Next up, this week's late night movie is a macabre romp around your Nintendo with the Adams family. For the youngsters, it's, it's a good game and it, it certainly would give you value for money in terms of playability because it's, uh, it's very addictive, but um, it doesn't really offer very much uh, original or new. The NES has a, a surfeit of good quality platform games. There's all the Mario games, there's DuckTales. So, uh, I think uh, more really could have been done with the license than just another bog standard uh, NES platform game. And finally, butter your popcorn on the PC with Indiana Jones 4 and the Fate of Atlantis. It's a much more sophisticated game, much more superior graphics, and the depth of the story and the puzzling is all at a much uh, higher level. It's got all the makings of a Lucasfilm game, if you look at it, the, the attention to detail, the quality of the graphics, just the, the humorous touches and the sheer depth uh, are really quite stunning. There's a, yes, we get the point. I'd just say it looks like one of the, uh, the best ever PC adventure games. Now for this week's feature. George Bush does it, Prince William started to do it, new kids on the block do it together, and so does Betty Boo. They all play the Game Boy. However, not content with merely owning the most pleasurable six inches of hardware money can buy, Game Boy owners are now customizing their beloved handhelds. I took the skateboard grips, put it on it, because it makes holding it much more comfortable, your hands don't sweat so much, and I put the essential Stussy sticker on there. I'm a toy collector, so I have loads of bits of toy and animation and colourful things. A Game Boy comes into this world naked, and it's just begging to be designed. It's crying out to be scribbled, drawn, smashed up, and designed all over. If you want some tips about how to customise your Game Boy, and for any other information about the show, you can join our special Games Master Club. Details on how to join will be given at the end of the show. So, some sound advice on where to put your pennies. Now it's time for our celebrity challenge and we'll go over to Games Master to find out what it is. Nice to see you again. I do hope you enjoyed my last little jaunt. Rather a competent player, wasn't he? For my second challenge this week, I thought I'd opt for a spot of football on Manchester United Europe. It'll be a game of two 90-second halves in which a talented Manchester United formation will pit themselves against the classic skills of Liverpool. I trust we'll all be treated to a display of exemplary gamesmanship. And our two contestants trying to get the ball in the net tonight are Simon Reynolds from Bishop Stortford and his opponent, Wimbledon and England striker, John Fashionu. <laughs> Now, Simon, first of all, I see you're wearing a lovely Ipswich Town top, are they? I see you brought all the supporters with you as well. Is, um, is this your team or is it just a cruel joke? It is my team, yes. Well, my commiserations to you. What kind of tactics will we see from you in the game tonight? Good, close, clean, 
passing play tonight. Not a skill? Oh, yes. Well, yes, talking about your skill, we're now going to your opponent tonight, John Fashionu from Wimbledon. John, how are you going to play the game tonight? I think, like Simon says, I think the crowd have come here to watch a nice, clean, enjoyable game in a good spirit. <laughs> I think over the years, Wimbledon have built out the reputation of being fair and honest, and that's really just what we want to do. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Right, well, we'll see if that all comes through. If you'd like to take your seats, lads, and then we'll get ready to kick off. And joining me in my newly converted pulpit dugout tonight, from Software House Renegade, home of the Bitmap Brothers, Tom Watson. Tom, welcome to Games Master. Good evening, Dominic. Now, what's the sort of basic skill you've got to master with Man United Europe game? Well, quite simply, it's passing. It's all about that, about being able to control the ball with a player and move on and find another man. Okay then, are our two competitors ready? Okay then, John, kick off. Simon is in the white Liverpool 70s team. straight away there. And that's going to be very important for this match. Okay, Man United, Steve Bruce picks it up in midfield. Oh, my God! Come on! Oh. That was a bit unnecessary, I think, Dominic. Surprise to you, Sam. Surprise to Liverpool show Man United. Now, here, here we have the set-piece system. This is a uh, target which indicates where the ball can go from a set-piece. So John's put it straight forward. Straight to picked, Crazy Horse himself. Picked up by Emlyn Hughes. Emlyn Hughes picks it up right towards the Man United box. It's picked up John by John Tosh. John does it wrong. severity of a tackle and oh, look at it in that situation whether or not it's a foul or even a booking. Right, so lines up the free kick, powers the free kick again. Oh, what is oh John hits the post, he's off the bench. Oh. Now John can get up the pitch. Steve Lyman takes it to the edge of the money there, but he shoots. Oh, excellent save. Save. John really has to tighten up on his tackling. Okay, John Clark out kicking out the midfield field kick towards the money there, but post again. Chris Lawyer gets the ball up, sends it to the again. Solid there. Gary Powell's oh. picks up. Did oh, no. Oh. And there we go. The half time is oh, so still no. nil. Well, it's all very tense here indeed. Simon appears to have been doing the most creative play, but John's tackles have been crunching. If you want to see how the match ends, tune back in after the break. Unfortunate Ipswich fan Simon Reynolds is taken on Wimbledon's John Fashion. The score at the end of the first half was nil-nil, but they hit the woodwork several times, so it looks like we're in for a cracking second half. Okay, John Fashion, of course, playing classic Man United, playing from right to left in the famous red strip. John Tasha plays a nice ball back there. Phil Thompson sends it out to the right wing, but there's nobody there. Man United, oh, Georgie Best picks it up, staying on his feet for once. John Fashion under the cover. It's a question of pride for John now. Get, getting on the score sheet. Stevie Bruce running out the middle of the park. He's looking for a man in space. There's not one. He's got to dig it himself. There's a man in space to his left. He ignores him. He's running He's going out straight the park. through. What can he do he with the shot? The shot. Ah. He the Just taps into the goalkeeper. An awful waste. Ray Clemens long up with John Tosh. That sends it again. Again, straight to the goalkeeper. Uh, Simon must be very confident that he's going to take Liverpool to victory in this match. Okay, Tommy Smith picks it up. Tommy Taylor loses the ball. Picked up. Simon. It 
was all it was all square at half time, but you let him have it in the second half, didn't well, you? Absolutely, yeah. We did a lot of research into how Fesh played, and uh, he played into our hands in the second half. You know, the lad's done great. Right. <laughs> now, John, you must be sick as a parrot. We well, obviously I'm a little bit disappointed. I think the crowd will bear with me. I think they thought it was a goal as well. <laughs> a controversial decision. You Just know, like 1966 all over again? Exactly. Um, I don't bear many hard wishes, so, you know, all the best. I'm not a bad loser. OK, well, John's got every right to be unhappy because he's missed out on the chance of our fabulous Golden Throbbing Games Master Joystick. Each week at this juncture of the show, we enter our consultation zone. If you have any problems with your favourite games, drop us a line about them and we'll get your queries answered by the man who knows more than anyone, the Games Master. <laughs> Hello, Games Master. Welcome to my kingdom. I am delighted to see you. And what have you got to ask me? On Sonic the Hedgehog, I heard there's a secret world on Act 3 of the Green Hill Zone. Could you please tell me where it is? I can't find it anywhere. Indeed I can, dear boy. Though I must admit to being a little surprised that you haven't found it yet. Work through the level until you reach a solid wall. Instead of bouncing over it, however, you can break straight through it by taking a run-up and spinning upon it. You will then be in a secret world where six city rings and an extra life await you. Thanks very much. See you. Oh, oh, delighted. Next, please. Hello, Games Master. Hello, and nice to see you. Now, what can I do for you? In Elvira, I can't find the four-leaf clove I need for casting a spell. Where is it? Elvira does indeed require a modicum of ingenuity. The clover can be found at the base of the hedge on the way towards the falconer in the meadow. You shall now have all the ingredients you need for casting the propitious surprise spell. Oh, thanks. Uh, next, please. Hello, Games Master. On Simon's quest, I cannot get past Deborah Cliff. What advice can you give me? To get past the very large wall that is Deborah Cliff, you need to select the red crystal and then kneel down for about five seconds. A whirlwind will then appear, which will whisk you across to the other side of the wall. <laughs> Rather ingenious, isn't it? Thanks very much. Bye. And I think that's enough little tidbits for one week. Heed my advice until we meet again. Bye. Some juicy computer tip bits this week. Now for our final challenge, let's see what Games Master has planned. I thought an old-fashioned Wild West shootout would be a good way of ending the first show with a bang. The game, Mad Dog McQueen. In this little escapade, you've been deputized, and your mission is to rid the town of outlaws in order to deliver to freedom the town sheriff held hostage in his own jail. So get your pistol hammer cocked and let's see those barrels blazing. To play this game, our contestant needs a steady aim but a quick trigger finger. We found him scouring the barren plains of North Wales looking for action. We've roped him in and he's here to play. Please flap your hands fervently for Tony Wright. <laughs> Tony. Now, Tony, I look at you and the word mature springs to mind. Is there a gap in the market for the older games player? Well, the kids don't get a look in these days, really. I mean, a lot of people are going in there to use these machines as sort of stress relievers and so on. It's good after a hard day's work to unwind a bit. OK, well, I've had a hard day myself. Let's hope you relieve my tension, Tony. <laughs> if you'd like to step up to the firing range, sure. we'll get ready to play. <laughs> And helping me co-commentate from the sidewalk is the editor of Computer and Video Games magazine, Tim Boone. Tim, welcome to Games Master. Hi, Dominic. Now, Tim, this is a very special game. Do we have a special challenger there? Oh, I think so. Mad Dog McCree is sure, surely is a special game. It's a laser disc game in which the idea is to shoot as many of these mean varmints as you can with your, with your six-shooter. You need to be on your toes all the time, always ready for the unexpected. And I think in Tony, we could have a contender who knows his stuff. OK, Tony, are you ready? Ready. Load your pistol and come out shooting. 
Howdy, stranger. We need your help. Mad Dog McCree's gang is taking over the town. The mayor and his daughter have been taken hostage out to Mad Dog's hideout. The sheriff, he's locked up in jail. We're going to have to get him out to help with the gang. Can you help? Good. Uh, one more important hey, thing. Hey, old codger, don't tell him. And there comes the first bad boy. Now this guy left his under license with a blow to him. There's another one. Oh, my God. They're, as I said, they're coming thick and fast. They do come very close. Good shooting, stranger. Hey, what I was going to tell you is the keys to get the sheriff out of jail are with one-eyed Jack. And he's in the saloon drinking. Now go get him. Very far away. They're coming from all over the place. Uh, well, finish them off and then I'll cut the bullets here just to make sure. Yeah, now this place is full of trouble. Apart from her, she's quite safe. Be careful, that's Mad Dog's boys over there. Looking at my keys, stranger? You wouldn't be trying to get the sheriff out of jail now, would you? Chaco! Show him why we didn't trouble him. Oh my god. Trouble starts up here again. Oh, and he's down too. The guys oh my god, they're the table. They're coming the at him. There he goes. Yeah. Oh, he's caught oh. as well. Oh, the man in the back, but he's caught as well. Well done, Tony. Brilliant shooting. Five out of five. He's now back off to the jailhouse to rescue the sheriff. No. Bad guys are plenty here. Tony's his wits about him right now. Shot him on the posterior there. I gotta get out of here. Free. Yeah, how did you save the sheriff? Now, now, Tony, that was incredible shooting there. Was there any point in the game where you thought, this is a bit tricky? Well, it's never an easy, easy game, you know, it's always a bit difficult, but it was okay. Well, Tony. We've got very big news for you. To commemorate your famous shootout at the Games Master Corral, we'd like to award you a special coveted Golden Games Master Joystick. So we kick off the series with three winners, but I have a feeling things are going to get a lot tougher. And now it's time for me to don my smoking jacket and have a refreshing cup of chamomile. So I'll see you again in seven days. Good night. Now for that information about the Games Master Club. We have newsletters, free t-shirts and competitions with staggering prizes. The Monk hotline number to call is 0891 600 123. Calls are charged at 36 pence a minute after 6pm and 48 pence during the day. Lines are open around the clock. <laughs>